Now, I'm just going to flick through some common things that we see in pregnancy, some things that are common and benign, uh, and, but are quite significant for pregnant mums, and then I'm going to talk about some of the conditions that we as doctors would be quite worried about. SPD is something that we see in increasing amounts in the clinic at the moment. It stands for symphysis pubic dysfunction. And it essentially occurs because during pregnancy, the placenta releases several hormones, one in particular, which softens all the ligaments in the pelvis and allows the pelvic bones to ever so slightly stretch and separate to allow the baby's birth, uh, to, to allow the baby's head through during, during birth. Um, it's said in all the textbooks to be a painless process, but actually, as you can imagine, any softening of any ligament which causes inflammation can be quite sore, and if anyone's ever strained an ankle, pulled an, a ligament in the ankle, you'll know that it can be quite painful. Symphysis pubic dysfunction occurs when the uh, gap in the front of the pelvic bone uh, opens up to an abnormal amount because of this softening, and it can be extremely painful. The treatment of SPD is difficult because it gets better after the pregnancy, but if it starts early in pregnancy, it tends to get worse. And the only really effective treatment is to rest. Um, we advise that women um, avoid long walks or uh, significant lifting and carrying, and also repeated stepping over things. So going upstairs is a particularly bad exercise. Um, we advise that they avoid straddle movements where the uh, thigh bones are separated significantly and the pelvis is put under, under significant pressure. Many women find that turning over in bed is really difficult, um, so we often advise, to keep their, uh, advise them to keep their legs glued together or even put a big pillow between their legs to support their pelvis. Um, if the pain is very severe, some women eventually end up on crutches uh, to help mobilize, particularly during late pregnancy. But it is self-limiting and it tends to resolve after pregnancy. A minority of women will actually have a persistent pain in the pelvis and they would benefit from further input from, uh, from physio. Hypertension in pregnancy is something that worries us probably more than most pregnant women. Um, high blood pressure in pregnancy is common. About 10% of all pregnant women will have at least one episode of high blood pressure on at least one occasion. Um, and if it's just a one-off episode and it's not particularly high, then there is nothing to worry about at all. As I previously said, pregnancy is quite a stressful condition. And if anyone's ever driven to our hospital to come to antenatal clinic from a long distance and had to wait for an hour for a space to open up in the car park, it always surprises me that um, not everybody in the clinic is hypertensive by the time they wait to see us. Um, so a one-off episode of high blood pressure is nothing to worry about. However, if high blood pressure is accompanied by leaking of protein into the urine, then it suggests the development of a condition called preeclampsia. And preeclampsia is one of the main things that we actually screen for during every antenatal visit. So every time a woman sees a midwife or a GP or her obstetrician, she'll have a blood pressure checked and a urine checked. And what we're screening for is the early onset of preeclampsia. Preeclampsia affects about 3% of first-time mums. It's much less common in second-time mums. And it's more common in older mums, mums who are overweight at the start of pregnancy, mums who have high blood pressure or other medical conditions to start with, and mums who are expecting twins. <laughs> 